It's Yolanda at DryerBuzz.com. Give me a little bit of FaceTime. And forgive me if you see the glare on my glasses. But as you can see in my glasses, there's a lot going on on my desktop. So I want to talk to you a little bit about the buzz behind the buzz. And then we're going to watch a video uh, with this Trump announcement. Okay, now you guys are up there. But I've got my tweet deck over here. I've got the video there. And I've got some stuff over here on drivers there. So my eyes are going to be all over the place. We're getting ready to head into the fall season. And that is the perfect time to be out networking in Atlanta. And by networking, I mean just really enjoying the city and the culture of the city. So if you follow us on Twitter or in, in at Dryer, there's a great tag that we have called Living Atlanta Style. And we added a, a feature where we're living Atlanta style stage by stage. Now. I love the theater. You can't read Dryer Buzz or follow me on social networking and not know how much I love live theater. I'm not talking about your average, well, I am talking about your average stage play. I'm not talking about the stage plays that some people are used to. But what I love about theater, and I'm going to slide on the soapbox for a minute, is that I like weekly entertainment. I love weekly entertainment, and I don't feel like I, as a demographic, uh, near empty nester, black female. I don't feel like I can get enough entertainment on a weekly basis or with the exception of the theater. I love life theater. And so I have started experiencing Atlanta stage by stage. Now this includes uh, stage plays. It's including uh, music. And I have all, I, I'm one of the people who leave the theater and keep the play view. And I'll turn this around in the thing so you can tell what it says. But I'm just back from seeing Two Drink Minimum at one of my favorite um, theater houses. All the theater, it's in the production company is theatrical outfit. I went to two drink minimum and we're living at Atlanta style stage by stage. So I think this makes number, this is either number six or number seven. We saw Bradford Marcellus when he came to town. Oh, we got a chance to go see Esperanza Spalding on last week. Yesterday was actually my birthday. So I went to the actual movie theater and saw Tyler Perry and Alex Cross. Should I tell you a little bit about that? I thought, and see, I'm one of those people, I love Tyler Perry when he takes off the dress, okay? I'm, I'm not the rush out and see the Medea movies, and I really, you know, we did an interview with Tyler Perry years ago, and I remember him talking about some of the roles and some of the movies that he actually would love to do if the Medea audience would allow him to grow. And that's been the conversation that he himself has been having with us. Or it's not something we make up. It's not something that, you know, we're off on a tangent about. But that's something that Tyler Perry himself has uh, has had this week. A conversation he's had with this week with his audience is to come out and support this movie. Because when he does something other than Medea, there, there's a different audience. And just like with us, I know we have uh, on Twitter and we also have an audience on Facebook and the audience, you know, of course, our main audience at DryerBuzz.com. And each of them are a little different. What I what I really loved about it, the movie, what not necessarily, because I didn't really care for the movie. I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm going to give it a benefit of the doubt. I wasn't really knowledgeable on Alex Cross and the series and the books and who this character is supposed to be. And I, I didn't. I thought maybe they didn't do a great enough job for those of us who got the email from Tyler and said, hey, look, come check me out as Alex Cross. I didn't think they did enough of a job, well enough of a job explaining to us who this guy was, uh, what this was about. Because it, it's like the minute, you know, you got in, and, and I'm not even worried about spoilers because you guys don't seem to be rushing out to see this movie. In fact, there were only 10 of us in a theater that seemed like it seated a thousand, but there were only 10 of us in there. But I love, I love, I love, love, love Tyler Perry in Mel Rose. I absolutely love him. I have, a, I have an undercurrent, what I call an undercurrent love for Tyler Perry that might require a restraining order at times. I'm just saying. What I, what I, it was reminiscent, the character and that time period of him doing that character reminded me a lot about Good Deeds. Now, there, there's a debate. Half of us think that Good Deeds, I don't know. I love Good Deeds. I thought it was a great movie. I thought it was one of the million remakes of, of like a pretty woman, you know, guy finds a girl in distress, rescues a girl, and they become, have, live, go off and live happily ever after. That movie can be done a thousand times and we will love it. And I thought Tyler Perry's attempt at that story was great. Now, back to Alex Cross. Go in, sit down, start watching the movie. Things are blowing up and, and people are dying before I even get to know who they were. 
Um, so it's like there are some people who who found their demise in this movie, and I'm like, I didn't get a chance to bond with them before all of this stuff started happening. So I wrote, a, I, I did a piece on it. I just did a little quick thing. It's called uh, Alex Cross has nine problems, and Tyler Perry is not one of them. Um, for those, you know, you have those people say, oh, well, you know, they just can't get down with Tyler Perry. If you can't get down with Tyler Perry, then you can't get down with Tyler Perry. That's just all it is to it, because no matter what he does, you won't like it. If you can't get down with Tyler Perry outside of Medea, then you can't get down with Tyler Perry outside of Medea. They just wait and make your $50 million when he does a Medea movie, and which is probably what he's going to have to do after this movie, because... It has not seen the light of 20, the, the right side of 20 million yet. Let's see how it does this weekend. So look for a Medea movie to be coming to theater so they can catch up with what they lost. But one of the reasons I love this play because it was about a mother and a son. And y'all know I tweet about my son a lot. And it's, it's a, an amazing relationship. Um, but this play reminded me of my grandmother and my father because he... Um, wasn't her only child she did have another child uh, whom she lost early in life but watching their relationship and then trying to watch my relationship with the son who has a question in the middle of recording but watching um and he's actually going to do um uh, something for his grandmother so, so that's why i love i love this play because it, it gave me a glimpse of look don't be that mom <laughs> And I'm probably, I'm probably, I'm probably going to be that mom um, who, you know, calls the son every morning, you know, needs to see him every week, that kind of thing. So I really love this because it reminded me of my grandmother and my father and their relationship. And, and as she got older, and even our relation, my relationship with my father and my parents as they get older, because some of us are in that space. Of us. Okay, that that's some of the buzz behind the buzz is we're living Atlanta style, stage by stage. If you have something coming to a wonderful stage and you want to definitely invite us out, um, go to dryerbus.com, click the link for pitch, and let us know about your events and hook us up. Hook us up so we can come and come and check it out. We'll definitely definitely spread the buzz. And I'll, I'll give you. I'll see if there's some little some more information about it. It is playing at the Balls Theater. It's part of a theatrical outfit. Uh, that was some of the buzz today. But let me just let's just take a listen at some of the stuff that uh, Trump Trump is talking about. Our President Barack Obama. President Obama is the least transparent president in the history of this country. There's never been anything like it. We know very little about our president. I'm very honored to have gotten him to release his long form birth certificate or whatever it may be. Now, many, many people have questions and very serious questions. I have a deal for the president, a deal that I don't believe he can refuse, and I hope he doesn't. If Barack Obama opens up and gives his college records and applications, and if he gives his passport applications and records, I will give to a charity of his choice, Inner City Children in Chicago, American Cancer Society, AIDS Research, anything he wants, a check immediately for five million dollars. The check will be given within one hour after he releases all of the records so stated. He'll be doing a great service for the country if he does this. If he releases these records, it will end the question and indeed the anger of many Americans. Okay, enough of that. Enough of that. Enough. Least transparent president. Now we've we've had a president who stole the election. Okay, uh, I, I I I I I have no I have no words. I have no words. Buzz, go over to dryerbuzz.com <laughs> and get your buzz on and check out check out the headlines that that are real. I want you to check out my girl. Jenny Triplett and see what she's talking about. She is definitely keeping an eye on the campaign. And let's see. I, I actually went back to uh, blogging 
this past, this month as well. So I've got some great pieces over there. One is uh, women spend millions to learn who they would have, could have, should have been. And this is after a summer of going to a lot of uh, women's a lot of conferences, some of them female focused, but a lot of conferences. And yeah, let's see here. Oh, I have this other blog, and it's called Will a Woman Rob God? <laughs> Definitely check that out because something funny happened on the way to church, okay? Or something funny happened at church, I guess I should say, during the offering. You know, that whole spectacle, what I call the spectacle of the offering. Y'all, y'all got to read this and, and, and let's, let's talk about this. And, and it's called, Will a Woman Rob God? It's like, my personal thing is, if you have money to give at church and you hold it for that Sunday when you get to go and stand up and do all of this, you know, all of this spectacle stuff. If people in need have to wait for you to get some glory before you give up a dollar, then you are, in my opinion, only my opinion, and I'm sorry I'm wearing red, red. I don't mean to sound like the devil, nothing like that. But if you if you have to hold your contribution to that time when you can get some glory, in my opinion, I, I just feel like you're robbing God. And on that note, while you think about it, and go check out the blog at dryerbus.com so we can talk about it. Meet me over at, at uh, Twitter at dryer buzz and we'll talk about it are you robbing god but i love y'all for spreading the buzz with us as you know we're in our we're heading into our 11th season that's 10 years of buzz at dryerbuzz.com now heading into our 11th season and i still love atlanta i still love you guys i still love spreading the buzz um so we'll catch you at dryerbuzz.com spread the buzz yeah.